Now from this point on until someday in the foreseeable future, I'm going to be loading up on a few specific higher yielding dividend ETFs and this is because I have a goal to get my dividend income to a certain level by the end of this year. Now my total monthly dividends as of right now is estimated to be somewhere of around $66 to $6,700 on a monthly basis. But like many of you, I have a goal to get my dividend income much, much higher throughout 2024. And there's a few specific investment vehicles that are perfect for the job. One of the investment vehicles that I'm going to be utilizing and buying a lot more throughout the rest of 2024 is the JEPQ ETF or ticker symbol JEPQ, the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF, which I currently hold around 508 shares of. Now, to be honest, I haven't really grabbed all that much JEPQ in quite some time. And this is pretty obvious considering my average cost per share is just over $46, which side note, as of right now, as I film in this video, JEPQ is trading at all time highs at almost $56 per share. And this is for an ETF that I bought initially for income generation. Now, in this video specifically, we're going to dig into JEPQ, explain exactly what this ETF is, how it works, and why, at least for me personally, this is the perfect ETF for those investors out there that are looking to add a lot of dividend income to their portfolio on a monthly basis and exactly my plans moving forward with JEPQ. So if you're a dividend focused investor that likes cash flow and likes it a lot, stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into this one. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero dollars invested to now earning over six thousand dollars on a monthly basis and over one million dollars invested in the market along with the ebook you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals so make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description now, like I said in the intro, there are a few specific names that I'm going to be loading up on a lot over the next few months, because like I said, although I do want to build a portfolio that's going to grow over time, I have a big, big emphasis as of right now in getting this portfolio to generate a ton of cash flow. And I'm talking even more cash flow in this portfolio generating as of right now. I want to surpass 7,000 and move upwards to $8,000 per month. And this is hopefully within the next six to 12 months. Now, before you ask which names am I focusing on as of right now, because I'm sure some of you guys might be curious, the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF, JEPQ is going to be one of the main ones, which is the ETF we're going to be talking about in this video. But other than that, as far as higher yielding options, we're going to be grabbing a lot more SVOL, the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF, along with some shares of things like SPYI and FEPI. The JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF seeks to deliver monthly distributable income and NASDAQ 100 exposure with less volatility. It then says expertise lead portfolio manager Hamilton R has over three decades of experience investing in equities and equity derivatives. The portfolio underlying equity portfolio employs an applied data science approach to fundamental research and portfolio construction. And then along with that disciplined option overlays implements written out of the money NASDAQ 100 index call options to seek to generate distributable monthly income. Now to look a little bit deeper into JEPQ's performance, which has been outstanding year to date, JEPQ is up almost 30 13%. And this is, of course, not even including dividends. We're going to go over the total return here in a second. But this is an outstanding performance, once again, because, like I said, and like a lot of you guys probably watching this video, I initially bought into this ETF hoping for a massive dividend, or at least somewhat a massive dividend, and hoping for an ETF that was going to trade mostly sideways and or up a little bit over time. But as far as cover call ETFs, JEPQ specifically has done much better than most all the cover call style ETFs across the market, up around 17% as far as price return goes over the one year time frame. Now this ETF hasn't been around all that long, so on the max time frame, this ETF is only up around 13.7%. It really wasn't until late 2022 where JEPQ really started to move and moved upwards a lot since then. But of course, it's not just price return. JEPQ has a trillion 12 month dividend yield of around 8.8%, which for some perspective is much higher than most all dividend paying stocks and ETFs across the entire market. Unless we're talking about different names that might be either risky and or and or have price decay. Now, because of JEPQ's cover call style mechanics, this ETF is not going to pay the same exact dividend on a monthly basis. It's going to have to do with things like, like option premium pricing as well as volatility throughout whatever time frame you're looking at. But over time, on average, JEPQ has paid investors like myself somewhere around 45 cents more or less on a monthly basis, which equates to around an 8, 9, 10% yield, which nobody is complaining about, especially if this ETF is going to continue to grow like it has. Looking at some of the most recent dividends, I've been pretty pleased, honestly. The last month was $0.45, cents, which was up quite substantially from the previous five. But this most recent one of $0.42 cents is back more in line with what we saw a few months back. In 2023, there was a few months where the volatility was extremely low, where JEPQ and JEPI, of course, were paying pretty tiny dividends, just over $0.36, cents, $0.37. Cents. 
but since then the dividends have been getting a little bit bigger for the most part like i said expecting around 40 to 45 cents per share per month but what is JEPQ actually returned over time? This is going to be something that's going to be very important and something that you should be really figuring out with whatever stock or ETF you're looking into. See exactly how much with dividends, without dividends, a stock or ETF has returned over certain time frames is going to give you an idea of what happened in the past, although of course it doesn't indicate what's gonna happen in the future. But for example, if an investor would have invested $10,000 into JEPQ, and this is back in May of 2022, 2.18 years later, that $10,000 would be worth around 13.6,000, not bad whatsoever, an average annual total return of 15.43%, or a total return of 36.74%. Now, I know there's different stocks and ETFs in the market that, of course, average a larger total return annually, but for a higher yielding vehicle like JEPQ, for example, I think 15, 16% average annual total return is outstanding. And to be honest, I would honestly be happy with anywhere even in the 8 to 12 range. And although this is sort of a one-off, a lot of cover call style ETFs do not have these same stats, of course. JEPQ is a good example that even though a lot of people thought this was a yield trap early on, because of the way this ETF works, JEPQ, at least so far in 2.18 years, so keep in mind, take it with a grain of salt, it hasn't been around that long, this ETF has performed outstanding. Now, lastly, you saw the title of the video, and I explained thoroughly that I plan on buying more shares of JEPQ over the next six months, not only to hopefully see JEPQ ride up higher and higher as far as ETF price, but also to farm some massive dividends along the way. Now, the reason being is that I'm a huge fan of the cover call overlay. The way this ETF works really delivers monthly income to investors like myself and to investors like you guys, no matter what's going on in the market, more or less. Of course, during times of low volatility, there's going to be smaller dividends, and we could see JEPQ's price dip, but overall, because of JEPQ's portfolio and because of that cover call overlay, and on top of that, the way this management has developed almost a perfect strategy for JEPQ at least so far, this ETF is going to be a big portion of my portfolio moving forward. But now lastly, most importantly, I want to hear from you guys down below. When it comes to higher yielding style ETFs, would you have to agree with me that JEPQ is one of the best in the entire game? Or if or if not, which are some of your favorites I should take a look into next? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by, and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.